Cork's World Theatre is a translation and adaptation of a Swiss play entitled Das Einsiedler Welttheater. Cork's World Theatre was performed in November and December 2010 at University College Cork, Ireland. The original Swiss play is by the distinguished novelist and dramatist Thomas Hürlimann. It was performed in the open air in the Swiss pilgrimage town of Einsiedeln during the summer months of 2007 and was seen by some 66,000 people. From the sky, a blowing, from the forest a howling, in the square a web of gaps and cracks. My skin is dissolving into a thousand wrinkles. The bones are creaking. What I eat, I can't keep down. <laughs> and all around, faces pale as death, black grinning teeth, It's all over with this world. The river is rising, the rain is pelting, sirens are shrilling, flood warnings, fire brigade alerts, rescue teams and guards. In every church and chapel there's prophesying and lamentation racing through novenas. Oh, oh. Oh, the city is awash with beer and wine. The night falls before its time. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, my name is Trina Scott and I'm here today in UCC's Stone Corridor to meet with the project coordinators and collaborators involved in Cork's World Theatre. And this film is being made in association with the upcoming publication of the text of Cork's World Theatre by Dr. Stephen Boyd and Dr. Manfred Sheva. Yeah, Einsiedeln is a community of around uh, 15,000 people and it has a long theatre tradition. In one of the secondary sources I read it said Einsiedeln is theatre mad. Mm -hmm. So it's a 900 year old tradition and uh, uh, you know, I was very impressed at you know, what this community in Einsiedeln managed to uh, come up with when they worked on their project in 2000 and in 2007. So Einsiedeln is uh, on the route, uh, is on the pilgrimage route to Santiago de Compostela. So being a pilgrimage place, it's you know, classically a, a place which is open to the world, you could say. So there's a Benedictine monastery in the center of Einsiedeln, uh, an impressive cathedral, and there's a square next to the cathedral, and in that square the performances of the World Theatre took place. And these performances, I suppose, we have to go back to the year 1924. In 1924 we had the first performance of Calderón de la Barca's El Gran Teatro del Mundo, in the German language version by Eichendorf, and that was in 1924. Since 1924, uh, we had performances of Calderon's World Theatre in the Eichendorf translation in intervals of five years. And so you can say it's a, a tradition which goes uh, over, back over many decades, and as it is with tradition, the citizens of Einsiedeln at some point thought, mm, yeah, the tradition is great and we want to keep it, we want to keep it alive, but the citizens also felt in 1990 we need 
to kind of give it a new direction. And so they commissioned the playwright Thomas Hürlimann to come up with an adaptation of Calderon's play uh, with a new version which would take into account the world we live in today. Stephen, could you give us some insight into Calderon's original text? Yes, Calderon's text was written in 1636 and it's a kind of play that was called in Spanish an auto sacramental, it means a sacramental play. And these were plays performed uh, during Corpus Christi once a year. And they're um, related to, I suppose, medieval uh, mystery plays, but they're allegorical plays and they end with the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. In this particular play, the allegory is based on the traditional idea that the world is a stage and that life is a play. So in the play, God is the author of the play, mm -hmm. and we have a series of actors who take different parts. There is a king, for example, there is a rich man, beauty, wisdom, uh, a farmer, a poor man, and an unborn child. And um, at the end of the play, God judges the performances of the actors um, and awards or punishes them accordingly. Mm -hmm. So that is... So the first time you encountered Hurleyman's adaptation of Calderon's text was in Einsiedeln, was it not? Yes, I had read his 2000 adaptation mm -hmm. previously, but the first time I saw the uh, new of the 2007 adaptation was in Einsiedeln itself, yes. So how did you respond to that as a Calderon scholar? Well, I must say I didn't really respond as a Calderon <laughs> scholar. I think the reason is that the um, performance of the play is so overwhelmingly spectacular that I wasn't thinking of any comparison mm -hmm. with Calderon at that sure. moment. Um, but I can tell you a little bit about that performance sure. if you would yes, like. Yes, well, how did you respond to that in yes, Switzerland? Well, first of all, the setting for the performance is the uh, square in front of the great Baroque church of the Benedictine uh, Monastery, which mm -hmm. is um, a very decorative building with two towers. There are a series of steps coming down from it, a series of balustrades. It's a great Baroque theatrical mm -hmm. backdrop. And the performance began, I suppose, uh, in the early evening. And by the time it had ended, the, it was completely dark. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, um, it's a performance of um, spectacular effects. Uh, I remember some in particular, for example, the opening, the entire cast, I should say, we, we don't just have principal actors, but almost not the whole community of Ein Zealand, but many mm. members who take part. We're talking the about hundreds, aren't Yes, yeah. hundreds yeah. of people um, slowly uh, come into the theatrical space. We don't see them. They're under a great blood red tarpaulin, which mm. gradually, gradually spreads out to fill the whole space like a great tide of blood. So it's a remarkable right. opening. Mm -hmm. Then um, rather like a circus tent rising up, the whole thing rises up and a figure emerges from the top who is the figure of the world dressed in white mm, mm. and wearing a, a, a female figure played by a male actor actually who begins okay. to speak the opening lines. Um, at the end of the play, um, the entire cast rush on stage down the steps with black plastic bin liners which they throw in the air. They collapse on the ground mm -hmm. and this is the end of the world in the play. Mm -hmm. uh, and the figure of the world who has now become death wanders in silence among all these prone figures on the ground and uh, there's a musical group playing at that moment led by a lone trumpeter and a series of people who are playing glasses set on trays which make an unearthly noise and of course the it is completely dark at that stage mm -hmm. a fire has been lit behind the facade of the basilica and uh, the flames are still rising up into the air so it's quite an overwhelming um effect and i was not uh, intellectually, <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed by this, these images, I wasn't able to think of Calderon at all. And of course, being in yeah. German as well. It was in German, yes. Um, but I think the interesting thing is that the play speaks through so much through image and through mm -hmm. spectacle that one could understand a great deal of what was going on, sure. if not the detail. For us, Stephen, the decision then by Manfred and yourself that this play was worthy of translation, not only translation, but adaptation and also performance in Cork in Ireland? Yes, I think our decision was simply due to the fact we found this such a, uh, one of the most spectacular theatrical um, mm. events we'd ever witnessed and for that reason alone we thought it would be a good idea to have it, mm -hmm. to open it up to wider audiences yes. elsewhere, of course especially here in, in Ireland and, and in Cork. I think that was the fundamental reason. Sure. Yeah. And um, 
Can you talk to us a little bit about the challenges then of adapting the play to this different cultural context? Yes, there are quite great challenges in, involved here. Uh, firstly, there is the fact that the play is um, a site-specific play. It's mm -hmm. written to be performed in front of the Basilica in Einsiedel, and it makes all kinds of references to that, to that space and to the landscape around Einsiedel, and that's one of the first things. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also written in verse, which is another challenge. Mm -hmm. It's also written in a combination of high German and the local Swiss German dialect. So it does mm. pose some sort of quite formidable technical challenges. So there were decisions to be made. Yes, indeed there were. Even um, about the, the, the location for the performance, for yes. example, was your first decision probably. Yes, well, uh, we one of the early decisions. One of the first decisions we mm. had to make was, uh, was where we might perform this and we thought of a number of possible venues in the city. Mm -hmm. um, then we decided that perhaps the uh, Honan Chapel here on the mm -hmm. campus might be a good setting. It's a church, it's very richly decorated and in the original play there are many passages which allude to the Baroque decoration of the church in Einsiedeln. Mm -hmm. So we had a kind of equivalent here in yes. the Ola Maxim in the Honan Chapel and also there's a, a circular piazza in front of the uh, Hohen Chapel, where we mm. originally thought we might perform the, mm. the play. Later we, for various reasons, had to um, abandon that project for financial reasons and we decided then to move to the Aula Maxima instead. Mm -hmm. So you were able then to make the Aula Maxima, which is, I suppose in a way, the, the inner sanctum of the university, work for you for this production? Yes, the Aula Maxima is a very suitable space. It's a great neo-Gothic banqueting hall with a minstrel's gallery at one end, mm. hammer beam ceiling and stained glass windows. And um, it's got a great brooding atmosphere. Mm. It's a sort of monumental space, which I think was very suitable for the atmosphere of this, this, this play. Yes, indeed. Cork's World Theatre is truly a collaborative project and represents a collaboration between the departments of German and Spanish studies. Also the Schools of Languages, Literatures and Cultures in UCC, the School of Music and Drama in UCC, also CIT Cork School of Music and Cyclone Repertory Theatre Company, of which Pather Donoghue is a director. So the idea was that the big main thing is that you had to have very good actors on board and actors that were unafraid and good, good physical actors as well. And so this is one of the biggest uh, parts of the production that we brought to it was to find the right people to fill the parts. Mm -hmm. And your choice then to stage the production effectively in the round in the Aula Maxima, mm -hmm. why, why was that important to you? Well, we wanted to use the whole space uh, to give a sense of drama and how big its space it is and where's the action coming from. We wanted to break the fourth wall. We didn't want the audience to be in a comfort zone or anything like this. Um, and to get a slight sense of, or maybe a large sense of uh, unpredictab unpredictability about the show and what's going to happen. And uh, I mean, it, it, the play itself has a very strong message. And so I guess along with that staging it wise, we wanted to wake people up, mm -hmm. but they didn't go to sleep. This is a very dramatic moment in the play when this um, large tarpaulin of, 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 of rolls down into the audience practically a, a, a black Madonna. Um, so this black Madonna is, was, was, the, was the black Madonna, the original black Madonna, except she was a skeleton. Mm -hmm. But she had the baby child in her, in her hand. And for me, this represented a bit of hope. There was a very bleak message about if we continually do, continue to damage the world, the, the way we're going and destroying the environment, that. That, that that's what the Course World Theatre message is about, well, this is what's going to happen. It will be a, the apocalypse. Uh, but uh, I, I like the idea that the Christ child in the woman's arms was still new and this, this chance, a seed of rebirth. If we t start to look at things in a very serious fashion and take care of the world uh, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, nurture it as it nurtures us, then there will be hope for us mm -hmm. and the world. I have with me now two of the actors involved in the 2010 Cork's World Theatre production, Maureen Prendergast and Peter Jankowski. Maureen, you played the character of the world, so how did you approach the, the playing of this very allegorical role? My first reaction was, oh, when, when I was offered the part, thrilled, oh yes, yes, please, because this is the kind of theatre I love to be involved in. It's spectacular, a huge cast of all ages, um, powerful, enlightening and, and shocking. Um, it was shocking to me because 
when I took a step back and started thinking about it, I said, what have I taken on? The world! You know, there was the, the costume was um, radiant, it was the world's beauty, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, they had sparkling mirror pieces on it. That, um, when, when the auditorium was dark and the lights were on the world, the lights were all over the auditorium. It was magical mm. and colourful and beautiful. And that was the way the world was meant to be always mm -hmm. before she was stripped of her colours. Um, and then, of course, the text itself was so poetic and beautiful, um, it revealed its own secrets. It was a very moving performance, I have to say. It, it was very, very moving on the night that I attended, anyhow. And Peter, you took on the role of Father Wise. How did you find that? The character I found uh, not too difficult. Uh, there were concentrated various issues, which are personal issues for myself as well. So uh, the identification with the part was not so difficult, but I th thought the work uh, had to be done on creating uh, for the audience a visual and vocal memory uh, where there is no dialogue, mm. just from four, in my case, mm. four speeches. So you had to uh, try to work out different tones for the different speeches. Was that all and it was, four speeches? Because it, in my memory it seems a lot more, yeah, he was a very present figure one or in the two play. Were, were rather short mm. You had to create a, a curve, a developmental curve, mm. although the character is not a person, it's not an individual, he's mm. a, a type. But the, the four, character, the four uh, uh, speeches were of a different character. It was quite a fall from grace. Initially, he is extremely confident and mm. belting and, and accusing his, his audience, uh, while in between he goes through a, a trough of self-doubt. And the final speech then is a, a, a mixture of rage and despair and, and uh, religious ecstasy and uh, even a, a kind of resignation to the fact that mankind seems to be uh, on, the, on the path of self-destruction. I suppose a mixture of a mood mixture, quite typical for a conscious human being at this time when mm. we're looking at what our species is doing to itself. Ihr kennt das Gebot, ama al otro como a ti. I obra bien que Dios es Dios, que Dios es Dios. Denn Gott ist Gott, und Gott war die Gabe. Gott gab euch alles, selbst das Lamm seinen Sohn. Und wie habt ihr, ihr Madensäcke, ihr Mistfinken, ihr Wurmnester, die Gabe verdankt? Antwortet! Why have you taken the air out of the air, the water out of the water? Why forged weapons of bloody war? Why kindled the fire that burns us? And why fenced off the earth and made it barren? You were there. How did it affect you? Well, I must say I have very vivid memories of the night of the performance. Um, Cork was in the grip of uncharacteristically cold weather. Um, it was a year on from the floods of Cork um, of 2009. And also, of course, the economic crisis was deepening by the day. So to, to come from that into this performance, it was uncanny really how pertinent the, the text and the performance of it was for me at that time and, well, still now today. So I, I must say, though, I, I wasn't convinced at the beginning. Um, as an audience member, I felt preached to. I, I felt it, it was very didactic, the text. And I, I was a bit irritated by that at the beginning. But almost despite myself, I found myself being drawn in to the, to the text, to the performance. And I became a participant on that night in what was happening. Um, the staging of it, you know, you couldn't help. There was nowhere but be involved. There was nowhere for the audience to, to hide. 
I was confronted, I was challenged, I was provoked. Um, and I must say I was also very, very moved. The children unnerved me, as I mentioned earlier. The, um, the, the local references, the use of Cork accent, the, the all too familiar figures of the rich man, the farmer, um, the priest, um, they just, they, they resonated with me, but in, in, a very, in a negative way. I have to say I could see them, I knew who they were in our society. And it just brought it all um, home to me, I suppose, how relevant the play was, how, how interesting it was that a play that originated, well, you know, the, the seeds of the text, the first text, were back in 17th century Spain, which had come then through uh, the romantic Germany into Switzerland in, in the, the, at the turn of the, the new millennium, and now in Cork. And how wonderful it was that, that a text that originated that far back could still be so relevant to, to, to the Ireland of today. And, I left the performance shaken, I have to say, um, and reading now the publication that Manfred and Stephen have put together, it was, it was interesting because I was able to process the, the event in, in a new way, read the background of the text, the production, and consider again, I suppose, its relevance in an Ireland that uh, in a way has lost, lost its identity. Um, we no longer have the pillars of church and state to depend on. We saw in the play how these you know, collapsed politicians, priests, um, or even now how, how you know, Ireland of the Celtic Tiger is no more. So, you know, the rich woman, how, how she was floundering. So I suppose it, it, I think it poses questions for the individual, you know, the nation and the world. And in that sense, I think it is, can truly be called world theatre. So, Manfred, where to from here for Cork's World Theatre? Whether Cork's World Theatre can be realised on a large scale remains to be seen. In any case, we wanted to encourage theatre makers in Cork and elsewhere to you know, try out different forms of world theatre, to experiment with different forms of world theatre, and possibly even consider laying the foundation for a world theatre tradition like in Einsiedel, in Cork and elsewhere. In conclusion, I would like to read a little passage from our forthcoming book, which is entitled World Theatre Translation, Adaptation, Production. Just imagine the potentially transformative energy which would be generated by many thousands of similar projects in other European countries, Africa, America, Australia and Asia. Projects which are based on culturally specific traditions and which are rooted in the local but simultaneously address the universal. Communities worldwide which take time out at regular intervals and go on a kind of theatrical pilgrimage trip in order to clarify for themselves what point our world is at just now and in which direction it should or should not be turned further.